I was asked a question about a stylized loot chest effect, and it seemed like a good challenge. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at how to create this effect. Now, while a similar effect can be created with explosions and using the built-in physics engine, the effect isn't quite right. To get around this, I'll be using coroutines, simulating custom gravity, and a few other bits. If that sounds interesting, let's get started. For this video, I'm going to be using three different asset packs, all of which are free, and you can find links in the video description below. From those asset packs, I've selected out a handful of prefabs. One of those is the chest, and the rest are loot objects that will be spawned. Note that on each of the loot objects, I've added a rigid body and made sure that there is a collider. For the chest, I've made some modifications for the animation, but most importantly, I've added an empty child that will serve as a spawn point. This video won't cover how to create or set up the animation, but if you'd like a video on that, let me know in the comments below. Lastly, but very important, I've added a collider to my terrain. Without this, the loot objects wouldn't have anything to land on, and the effect is not nearly as satisfying. With the scene setup all covered, it's time to jump into the code. And there are, of course, many, many ways to create this effect. But I have chosen to do it with two scripts. I'm going to start with a script that will be on the chest, and will spawn all the loot objects. The second script is going to be on each of the loot objects. This script will control the velocity of the objects, with the general idea being to move under reduced gravity without having to change the gravity setting of the project as a whole. To get started with the spawn loot script, I'm going to create several variables. The first is a list of game objects that I'll call loot. This is going to hold reference to all the prefabs that the chest can spawn. For this variable and many of the rest, I'll be adding the attribute of serialized field so that my private variables can be seen and modified in the Unity inspector. Next, I'll create integers to control the min and max number of objects that can be spawned. I'm also adding the range attribute so that I have a user-friendly slider in the inspector. Then to control the position of the loot objects, I need a reference to the spawn point, which is where the loot will be created, so I'll add a transform variable. Now I suspect for most games, a loot stash will only be lootable once, so I'm going to add a boolean to track whether the loot has been collected or not. And finally, I'm going to create that boolean that will trigger the loot to be spawned. I'm separating it from the rest of the variables as it's part of the way that I'm triggering the loot and isn't necessarily the way your game will do it. I'll remove the start function as I won't be using it. I will, however, be making use of the onValidate function, which is called when values are changed in the inspector. Inside the onValidate, I want to ensure that the minimum number is smaller than the maximum number. If that's not true, I'll set the max number to be one larger than the minimum number. Then in the update function, I want to check two conditions before the loot gets spawned. The spawn loot boolean needs to be true, and the has been collected boolean needs to be false. If these conditions are met, I'll set the spawn loot to false to prevent the spawn code from being called every frame. I'll also call the loot function. This is the function you'll want to call in your game, no matter how you're triggering the loot creation. In the loot function, I'll set the has been collected to true and generate a random number that will be the number of loot items that will be spawned. That number is then passed into a coroutine, and I'm using a coroutine as I don't want all the loot to be created at once, but rather over a small period of time. In the coroutine, I want to first trigger the animation and then wait a short time until the animation is complete. Now triggering the animation is 100% optional and you may not need to trigger an animation depending on your implementation. Next, I'm gonna create a for loop that runs from zero to the number of loot items spawned. Inside the for loop, I'll instantiate a random item from the loot list and set its position to the spawn point. Then before continuing with the for loop, I'll wait a short time to create the illusion that the loot is being spawned one object at a time. And then that's it. That's it for spawning the loot. The next piece of code will control the motion of each object. With the first script done, it's time to move on to the second script, which I'm calling loot drop. And I'm gonna add a few variables. I need to track the current velocity of the object, which is a vector three. And I'm going to initialize that going in the y direction or up. I'm also gonna need a reference to a rigid body component. The last variable is going to keep track of the start position of the loot object. In the start function, I'm going to somewhat randomly set the velocity. I'll first multiply the upward velocity by a random value. You can increase the range to send the items higher or reduce the range to have the items stay closer to the chest. Then I want to add a little velocity in the X and Z directions so the items will scatter around the chest. I'll do this by adding a new vector three that has random components in the X and Z directions. I'll be using the rigid body to set the position, so I'll cache a reference to it by using the get component command. 
Then since my code will be controlling the position of the loot objects on the rigid body, I'm going to turn off gravity and set is kinematic to true. Moving on to the update function, this is what's going to do the actual moving of the loot objects. The first line of code in the update function will move the loot object. In this case, I just want to change its position by the value of the velocity multiplied by the time of the last frame, or time dot delta time. Next, to give the effect a little more flair and make it more fun, I want the objects to rotate a little. In my case, I want the objects to rotate mostly on the y-axis and just a little on the x and z axes. You can, of course, play with the values until you get your desired result. The next piece of code limits the downward velocity. In my case, I chose to have a maximum downward velocity of 4. If the object is moving downward or in the negative y direction at more than 4, then the velocity in the y direction is reset back to 4. Otherwise, the velocity value is updated. This is done using a smaller value for the acceleration due to gravity. In my case, I used 5. Now this is the key piece. The default value for gravity in Unity is 10, or sometimes even higher. And if you use this, this results in motion that is generally too fast and doesn't look quite right. Once again, you can adjust the value to get your desired results. Since this script is controlling the motion of the loot object and not the physics engine, there is nothing to stop it when it collides with the ground. Now I'm sure there are many other ways to get around this issue, but my solution is to check if the loot object is near its starting position and to check if it's moving downwards. If the starting position is not near the ground, you're going to have to look for a different solution. So if the object is near its starting position and moving downwards, then the gravity needs to be turned back on and is kinematic needs to be set to false. The velocity of the rigid body also needs to be set. This keeps the motion in sync and gets the rigid body up to speed, pun intended. When that's all done, the script needs to turn itself off as it's no longer needed. The result of this last chunk of code is allowing the Unity physics engine to control the last bit of motion and allow the collision with the ground to occur normally. With all the code written, I'll head back to Unity and attach the loot drop code to each of the loot prefabs. On the chest, I'll add the code to spawn the loot. Then to keep things easy, I'm going to lock the inspector so I can select all the loot objects at once and drag them into the list, like so. If I then toggle the spawn loot option, the code is going to run as soon as the game starts. Pushing play, I can see my loot effect in action. So there you go, I've shown you how to create a stylized loot effect. If that was interesting or useful, think about hitting that like or subscribe buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Patreon and Discord server in the description below. So until next time, happy game designing.